For 42 years, the Assad family has had an uncontested rule in Syria. Half al Assad, the former president, he controlled the army, the police, the government, the judiciary, the parliament, and the media. The Assad family supported their cronies, who became wealthy at the expense of uh, Syrians. They wrote the nation uh, for eight months. There has been an uprising against the government, mainly because people have been fear, uh, feeling the injustice. The Syrian government, since the uprising in March, started. They targeted journalists, doctors, uh, everybody who works in the media. Like a, f a friend of mine who's a doctor, he was tortured and he told me, I feel being a doctor today is the mo most dangerous crime you can ever commit in Syria. It's mainly if you attend to the wounded protesters, then you are accused immediately of being a spy or a co collaborator against the Syrian government. They chase and kill defectors in the army mainly because those defectors don't want to kill Syrian citizens. Um, there has been 10,000 defectors who formed um, the Free Syrian Army, who is uh, fighting the Syrian uh, regular army. Um, and they even target humanitarian workers, actually. In May, I was arrested while I was leaving Syria. Um, I went to Syria to work on a humanitarian mission by MSF, Doctors Without Borders. And when I was leaving the country in May, I was arrested in the, um, at the airport. I was held in Kimikado for a month, over a month actually, during which I was tortured. Um, I was beaten, whipped. Um, they hung me for eight days. I was preventing from sleep for eight days. And then, like they would do, uh, they would use different methods of torture. Um, and they wanted to break me, to make every Syrian intimidated. This is their policy: to make you intimidated, so that you don't question their control over everything in the country, their injustice. <clears throat> they even planted recently; they planted mines at the border because people are escaping through Lebanon and Jordan. So they planted mines um, with the Syrian, uh, Syrian Lebanese border. The Syrian government has over $20 billion um, in reserve. They have uh, around $17 billion um, in bank reserves. And they have a fund of $4 billion to help stabilize the Syrian currency. So far, they have been spending this money um, because, you know, military operations require a lot of money. Um, so far, the Security Council hasn't taken any resolution to support Syrian citizens against the crimes of the Syrian government, the killing machine of the Syrian government. China, Russia, India, Brazil, and South Africa, they vetoed every resolution by the Security Council to condemn the Syrian government or to act
there is no motive for the international community to intervene because Syria cannot pay, pay back the cost of military intervention. This is first. Uh, second, most of the Syrian intellectuals and opposition figures are against any kind of military intervention. Even though um, I hear sounds here and there that, that are starting to voice a request for military intervention. Syrians in the street are pro, like, I don't want to say all of them, but most of the Syrians in the streets who are dying want a military intervention to protect them from the, the Syrian government. I think the key to injustice is to, to stand up every time we see any incident of injustice. In Syria and in mostly the Arab countries, we have been silent against the crimes, the control of the government, the authoritarian movement. We have been afraid, like for example, I remember on my life, I was outspoken against the government. I had many friends who left me, mainly because I was outspoken. They were so afraid. Like if I speak, even if I mention the name of the president, they would leave. They would run away from me. But like for the first time since the uprising started, I was really proud to be Syrian for the first time. Um, because mainly I was always frustrated with how Syrians were silenced about the crimes of the government. And now <coughs> there is a national uprising against the injustice we see every day. I lived in injustice during all my life when I was in Syria until I left. It's mainly like similar, um, like you see daily incidents here and there. But you can't do anything because you feel intimidated. They can take you for an indefinite period. They can put you in jail. No one can hear about you. Uh, I remember once I was crossing the street and uh, there was a car that about, like, the driver was driving crazy. And I told him, you idiot, why are you driving crazy? I shouted at him. And um, the car opens. An army guy comes out of the car. He came to me and he was swearing at me. He told me, you idiot, how do you swear at, a, at an army guy? I had to keep silent because in Syria, uh, if you turn the swear or, or like do anything, you would be jailed for at least two years if you stand up to a guy from the army or the police. Um, the police institution had, be, had been weakened at the expense of the secret police. The secret police mainly is ruling the country today and I think not only today, for 42 years the secret police has been ruling Syria I think we have always to stand up for justice even in democracies democracy is very important to form transparency to prevent the control of people by, by the government, or like I can say, to prevent dictatorship. Because once there is uncontested rule, the country turns into a dictatorship, where no one questions the ones in power. There should be a cycle of transparency where many bodies monitor each other, and this is called democracy, where the parliament, the government, judiciary are independent from each other. And here you have transparency, a cycle of transparency. Yeah. My last sentence is, we have always to stand up for justice, even in every, our, our daily life, even if we, if we feel threatened. Because as humans, we have to stand up to each other, to stand up for justice and equality. Thank you.